My name is Ian Burrell. I'm the Global Ambassador for Rum and thank you for joining us uh, for this special tasting of a new rum to the United States, Equiano, the world's first African and Caribbean rum. So I'm here in a, uh, one of my favorite bars in the world. This is Trader Happiness here in London, the award-winning Trader Happiness. And it's a rum bar, so make sure you're in London. Get down here and drink some rum. Uh, and make sure you ask for the Equiano rum because, hey, I'm one of the guys that helped create and create and founded the actual uh, product, founded the actual brand. I have so much pride and joy in seeing uh, a concept that I've worked on with uh, some of my team for, for a few years now. But it's the reality of actually having this in front of you is just something I've always, always dreamed about, of having a great rum, uh, a unique rum, a rum from the African continent blended with rums from the Caribbean, uh, all blended inside one bottle. But we'll get onto that in a little bit later when we do a tasting. Now, as a global ambassador for rum, I travel around the world and I, I drink in some of the best places in the world. I work with some amazing, amazing rum people and bartenders. And one of the things I've always looked for is something that was unique, something that I could use in many different types of drinks, whether it's a cocktail, whether it's sipping by itself, or whether it's just a simple serve. And that's how Equiana was born. Equiana was born because we decided that we wanted to create a drinking rum, not a sipping rum, because I know some people out there say, is Equiano a sipping rum? That's one of the questions I actually see come up online. No, Equiano is a drinking rum. It means you can drink it in any way. You can drink it in cocktails. You can drink it with your favorite mixer. You could sip it neat or even have it on the rock. So it's one of those rums that is versatile. What makes it versatile? What makes it different? Uh, well, when I say it's an African Caribbean rum, it's a blend of rums from the African continent, uh, from Mauritius, the island of Mauritius, and they make some amazing rums down there. And we get the rum, which has been aged in cognac casks, send that all the way to Barbados, where that's blended with rums that were aged in once used bourbon casks at the Four Square Distillery in Barbados, the award-winning Four Square uh, in Barbados. So once a rum lands on the island, it is vatted, it's bottled, bottled in Barbados, and then sent to you guys in the States and over into Europe as well. Now, that's an important part of our story. And one of the reasons why it's an important part of the story is because of the name. So Alauda Recuano, historical figure. This is why we named the rum. Now, Alauda Recuano was enslaved in Africa. He was brought over from Africa and brought over to Barbados. Went from Barbados to United States and then to United Kingdom. Funny enough, that is the same journey that our rum makes. Our rum actually comes from Africa, goes to Barbados, heads over to America and heads to the UK. So we actually were inspired by Equiano to actually make the same journey with this liquid. This is one of the reasons why it is premium, it is complex, it is flavorsome. But don't take my word for it, I want you to judge it yourself. So if you have a bottle at home, perfect. If you haven't, make sure you click on the webpage www.equianorum.com and have a taste with me. So I'm gonna pour myself a nice little Equiano rum and have a taste. Oh, no, I really, really wish we had Aroma Vision here because you're missing out on this, unless you do have this at home because then you're smelling some of the, the amazing aromas. But how do we appreciate rum? This is another question that um, I've seen online. Uh, how do we appreciate rum? Well, one of the first things you do is look at the rum. Now, the light here in Trade Happiness is a little bit more seductive, so you're not gonna see too much of the color, which in a way sometimes is a good thing because there are some rums that have additives uh, added to their rum. So they add a bit of caramel, they might add some sugar, some spices inside it. So the true color of the actual rum is not really evident. So yes, you can look at the rum. Yes, it can look beautiful. Sometimes it's real, sometimes it's not, but I can 100% guarantee and tell you this is 100% untouched. Have, nothing's been added, no sugar, no spices. This is all natural or from the barrels. So you can look at the rum. We can also look at the, the way the liquid hits the glass, you can, what we call uh, either tears or legs. They're really nice and viscous and big. It shows really good aging. If you do hold the glass up to the light, you can actually see a little tiny green hue as the liquid hits the glass. Again, that shows really good significant aging and a really good use of wood. So that's the first thing you do. And then the aroma. 85 to 90% of our taste comes from our sense of smell. So it's very, very important that you have a really good nose of the spirit. Bear in mind, this is not wine. Don't be spilling the glass around and sticking your nose inside there. Wine's like, what, 10, 14% alcohol by volume. This is 43% alcohol by volume or 86 proof, as you guys say over inside the States. So be careful once you move it around just to agitate it, let it settle. 
and then put your nose in there and go from left to right or right to left. Just taking in some of the aromas, the natural aromas. And, and it's all subjective. I may smell something that you, not, that you don't smell and you may smell something that I don't smell. It's all about that emotional connection, that emotional recall of aromas. So I'm picking up things like, oh, like a creamy, buttered, sawdust wood, touches of vanilla, like orchard fruits as well, some orange notes, like an orange peel, a little touch of apricot. Oh, really exotic. And then on the taste, I have a little tiny bit on the, on the palate. Mm. Just to warm up the receptacles on the tongue, and then I have a, a better sip. Oh, get some of that air just to coat over your palate, just to cool down the spirit, because it is 86 proof, as I said. And what I'm getting on, on the palate, I'm getting a little bit more of that woody notes, but a touch, not too much, which is great. Remember, we use, uh, in Equiano, uh, once use cognac barrels, which is limousine oak, and once use American oak. And um, so both different types of woods will give different types of taste profiles. But fortunately for this rum, it's not too woody. It's quite light or medium, I just like medium to light, which again, really lends well to sipping it by itself or having it with ice um, or mix it with your favorite tall long drink. Also, as it warms up, I'm just getting some of those natural spices, a little bit of all spice as well, touch of nutmeg. Oh, no, you don't get this from other spirits. Try this with vodka. Yeah, you're not gonna get any of that from vodka. Mm. And as it glides down your palate, glides down um, your throat, it starts to warm up your chest really nice, it's like liquid central heating. Um, oh, and it, it's elegant, it's, it's, it's a medium to long finish. Um, one of the reasons why we did go to Barbados to create this product is because we wanted that, that balanced uh, type of finish. Being a Jamaican, I would have loved to use a Jamaican rum inside this blend, but the Jamaican rums are like the Scotch whiskey of the rum world, and they're really big and robust um, and an acquired taste. So maybe we might do a, a Jamaican version in the future uh, for some of you hard dyed Jamaican rum lovers. But we wanted to have a rum that was versatile, that could be used in many ways, uh, that we can introduce to people that are on their start of their rum journey. Or you can, or you can also introduce it to rum lovers that are already on that journey, that are into their cast rims or their other crafted rum. So it's a rum for everybody. It's, uh, it's one, of those, one of those products that you have to have in your back bar, you have to have at home, and you have to recommend for your friends. Mm. And all natural. So any sweetness you're getting from there is all natural sugars. Natural sugars from the cask, from the wood, not added. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with adding sugar to a rum if it's a good rum, because there are some bad rums in there with sugar inside there. But if you're looking for something that is 100% sugar-free, then Equiano rum is your rum. So there you have it, Equiano rum, in all its heavenly glory, neat, picking up the aromas and the taste. As I said, you can actually have this with a couple of cubes of ice, in a mixer, or in a cocktail. Why not in a cocktail? And if you don't have any cocktail ideas, here's a couple of really great recipes I'm gonna show you uh, how to actually use at home or in your bar, how to use Equiano. Um, please send us in your ideas, your recipes. Go online, go to the webpage, get a bottle, send us your cocktail recipes at www.equianorum.com. And uh, I'd love to actually try your versions of some of these drinks. So I'm just gonna have a sip of this. Oops, that's for the, our friends that are not here anymore. Mm. Yeah, so let's make some cocktails. Okay, so you've tasted the rum. Do you enjoy it? I bet you did. But some of you don't drink neat rum. Some of you like to drink rum with a mixer or inside a cocktail. So here's three simple drinks that I want you to try. Try at home, try in your bar, get your bartender to make with Equiano rum. Now the first drink we're gonna try is the Burrell Daiquiri. Named after me, it's a bit narcissistic, but hey, <laughs> it's a really good drink and it's really simple to make. So First of all, you get your shaker. Um, you're gonna start off with some freshly squeezed lime. Just actually squeeze this up. I'm gonna use one ounce of freshly squeezed lime. Straight inside there. And then just to sweeten it up, we're gonna use half an ounce of agave nectar. Now, sometimes you get some agave syrup. I like to use 100% blue agave because you get that earthiness, that 
really natural sweet flavor, even honey-esque. So uh, definitely try your 100% uh, uh, blue agave. And then last but not least, the rum, the crowning, the glory, the best part of the drink, the Aquiana rum, of course. Ah, let's open some of that. So <clears throat> we've used half an ounce of agave nectar, we've used one ounce of lime, we're gonna use two ounces of rum, so it's half, one, two. And it makes a really nice balanced drink. So let's put it there. In fact, I'll put a little touch in just for my friends. Excellent. And then we add some ice. Give it a nice hard shake. All the creative energy goes into your shake now. Open it up. Get our shield glass. Ah, put it in. Now I like to single strain my uh, daiquiris because I don't mind those little tiny bits of uh, ice inside there just because hey, if you're drinking this in a hot country, they're gonna melt anyway. It's nice with the dilution. Top that up, and then just gonna add just a couple dashes of orange bitters. There we go. And then a squeeze of freshly peeled orange peel, just to get those oils on top and you get that aroma of orange to really complement the flavor of Equiano rum. I'm gonna add that in my garnish. And there we go, the Burrell daiquiri made with Equiano rum. Cool. So I hope you really enjoyed that one and uh, keep putting the, uh, sending the messages on social um, so I can answer them. If I don't get to you straight after this, then I'll just make up something as I go along towards the end. Hey, that's what I do. But anyway, let's get back to the second drink. So the second drink is again, another one of my favorite ways of drinking Equiana rum. Now it's very similar to a drink that you might know as a Negroni, but instead of using gin, we're gonna use rum. And there's a special name for this drink. The actual drink is called the Right Hand um, with a couple of dashes of chocolate bitters in there and rum instead of the gin. But we're gonna call it the free hand. Why? Because of Alauda Requiano, as we know, freedom fighter, entrepreneur, abolitionist. That's why we're gonna call it the free hand. So again, very, very simple drink. We're gonna do this in our mixing, a, a, a mixing uh, glass. I'm actually gonna give it a little bit of tropicalness. So this is our pineapple mixing glass, courtesy of Trailer Happiness, you know, one of the best bars in the world. You'll know that. So we're gonna add equal parts of, and about one ounce each, uh, equal parts of sweet vermouth, one ounce of that, one ounce of Campari, excellent, just a couple dashes of chocolate bitters, one, two, three, and as I like to say, the piece de resistance, the uh, Equiano rum. We're actually going to put a little bit more of this one, I'm actually going to put two ounces of the Equiano rum inside there, perfect. That aroma, remember when we were doing a taste earlier? That aroma is just wafting over. We should have aroma vision so you can actually uh, smell this. Right, I'm gonna add some ice to that. Oh, don't worry about the ice going all over the place. That's what we expect inside a bar. And then we're gonna stir it down so it's nice and cold because this drink should be really, really stingingly cold and also nicely diluted. Because uh, you really want to get the rum, the campari, the vermouth, and of course the chocolate bitters all mixing together and working together in harmony. Excellent. Oh, gorgeous. Just going to strain it out into our little glass here. I always like to use like a, what we call a low ball or a rocks glass. Now you might say, oh, it's only half a glass, but you're going to top this up with ice. If you can get a really nice ice block or um, a really large ice cube, it would be perfect. If you don't have that, it doesn't matter. Just make sure you've got plenty of ice inside there just to chill it down. And then you're just going to uh, add a twist of orange. Again, the orange note, quite uh, consistent with our drinks that we're making today. The orange note is important for the rum. Add that to the top, and there we have the free hand, a variation of the right hand, which is a variation of the Negroni. 
but made with Equiano rum. Cheers. So, I hope you like that drink when you try it at home. But I'm gonna answer a few questions because there's a few questions coming in. And one of the questions that is asked by me, and in fact, a lot of rum, rum people around the world is, what gives rum its color? Well, if you look at something like Equiano, all this color is all natural, as it actually, it comes from the barrels that the rum has been aged in. Yes, you'll see rums that look very light, and they've either been, they're either straight off the still, or they've been filtered from charcoal to take the color out. Some of them are a golden color like this, so they've been aged in either American oak or French oak, like Equiano has, or some are really dark, but they've added some caramel uh, into the actual product just to give it this really big, dark looking, rich flavor. But Equiano is all natural, no sugar added to it, no spices, all this color, this beautiful golden color is actually coming from the two types of barrels that are used, the cognac cast in Mauritius, and then the American oak, the ones used bourbon cast in Barbados, so natural. And another question that's always asked about Equiano is, how do you drink it? Is it a sipping rum? Well, the word sipping rum for me is, any rum can be sipped. Uh, you can have a, a white rum that's unaged from say uh, Jamaica, then you can sip that if you really want to. Um, or you can have a really 10 year old, 13, 14, 15, 20 year old, really expensive rum that you may want to mix in the cocktail because that's how you like your particular rum. So. Equiano is a drinking rum. You can drink it in many ways. You can have it neat, have it on the rocks, have it in a cocktail, have it in a nice tour drink. Speaking of tour drinks, I'm gonna actually make a tour drink. Actually, have it like this. One of my favorite ways of drinking Equiano is in the highball. And the highballs are like those big, tall, tall long drinks with effervescence, some rum inside there, some other fruits and flavors, whatever you want inside there. So dark and stormies, mojitos, are all highballs, even the gin and tonic but we're not talking about gin, we're talking about rum. So let's make a really simple highball, Equiano highball. This is actually one of our signature serves. This is called the Golden Stormy. And if you, you'll see why it's called Golden Stormy. It's not called a Darker Stormy, the Golden Stormy. So the gold rum, Equiano, a nice good measure, two ounces of that. Then we're gonna top it up with your favorite ginger beer or ginger ale. Ginger ale will be a slightly bit drier than ginger beer. Ginger beer is a little bit sweeter. So if you have that sweeter tooth, I would go for ginger beer. If you look for something drier, I would go for ginger ale. So use a bit of ginger ale. I'm gonna to top that with ice. Perfect, look at that. Nice, tall, elegant drink. And the little tiny twist that we wanna to add to that is the twist of orange. Again, we're gonna try and bring out some of the orange notes. I'm just gonna twist that in there. And that's what we mean by twist of orange. It's just a twist of orange peel, just to get the oils that will sit in the glass. And then we're gonna add some lime, a twist of lime as well. So that's what makes the Golden Stormy really recognizable. If you see one of these inside a bar, you see a nice tall, long drink with ginger ale and a twist of lime and a twist of orange. It's probably the Equiano Golden Stormy. Add a straw to that. Fortunately, we have some wooden straws, oh sorry, paper straws, because we don't use none of that plastic stuff, and it's finished. Equiano Golden Stormy, nice and simple. You can make this at home. Make this for your friends. Make one for me. Anyway, cheers. So thank you for joining me with uh, a taste of Equiano rum. Uh, I hope you go out there and buy a bottle. If you want to know where to get it from, just look at the details here. Go to a webpage, www.equianorum.com. Um, and just make sure you buy one for your friend. Make sure you buy one for your dad, your mom, your sister, your brother, everybody. Buy one for everyone because it's, remember, it's the world's first African and Caribbean rum. It's made by me and some of my friends. Well, besides, it's also award winning. I forgot to say that, award winning, but you're gonna find it out because you're gonna do your due diligence. It's all about really great tasting rum. So cheers. Uh, my name is Ian Burrell, the Global Ambassador for the Rum Category. This has been Equiano Rum, and I hope to see you in a bar in the future. Cheers. Yaman.